Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars The Bad Batch video. And today we're going to be continuing a thread that I dropped in my episode 3 review, which is discussing the true reason that the Empire is moving away from clones. Because, to be honest, based on the fact that the Empire created a giant moon laser beam, I'm not really believing Tarkin when he says that the main concern is the expense of the clones, especially when the Stormtrooper Corps would become far, far larger than the clone army and that the Empire has never really shown restraint when it comes to military spending. So what's the real reason? And I do think there are one or two reasons that are most relevant, but there's also some general considerations. And I mean, on a general level, we have effectiveness. It's possible, albeit unlikely, that Tarkin and the rest of the Empire believed that a force of recruits, volunteers, and conscripted individuals would actually be more effective overall throughout the entire galaxy than a much larger clone army. I think if you look at the average clone trooper and the average stormtrooper, it's pretty clear that the clone trooper is more effective. They were bred for war, they underwent stringent training, they were single-minded and focused, especially after Order 66 and with the inhibitor chips, whereas stormtroopers as ordinary individuals are not gifted and usually with perfect genetics and, you know, the single-minded determination that clones have. So yeah, the average stormtrooper is probably going to be less effective than the average clone. That being said, I think as we're seeing with Admiral Rampart in Episode 3, it is possible that Stormtrooper Commando units could be as effective as the clones they're replacing. But again, we're talking about a galaxy-wide military here. I don't think the switch was made from a pure military effectiveness point of view, just like I don't think you can really claim that it was because the Empire didn't have or want to spend the extra money. So what then is the reason? Well, in my opinion, one of, if not the prime primary reasons why the switch was made away from clone troopers is because the Imperial military served as an incredible tool of propaganda and indoctrination. First of all, the Empire wanted to separate itself from the Clone Wars on an ideological level, not just the Clone Wars, but also the Republic of Old, which Palpatine purposely painted as unable to protect the galaxy, as bloated, as capable of almost assassinating its head of state. So moving away from clones to a more traditional traditional army is definitely one way to distinguish yourself from the Clone Wars era Republic and sort of help make that new image of the Empire, especially where stormtroopers were definitely one of the more visible arms of the Empire. It would have been a little bit weird if the military force was carried over exactly as it had been. That's just the beginning though, and there are a ton of other ways that the military can serve as a force for propaganda that are probably worth bringing up. First of all, the Imperial military was a very prominent source of direct indoctrination on citizens of the galaxy. The Imperial military was a very attractive job for a lot of people, especially those who didn't otherwise have opportunities. And as you went through the academy training and the other aspects of joining the Imperial Army, Navy, or one of the other branches, you're undergoing a load of propaganda, which is being fed directly into you, especially during a usually fairly vulnerable time of your life. So you're basically being transformed into an Imperial citizen through military military service. And then of course, once you're in the military, your loyalties are basically being policed by the ISB and by other agents within the Empire. So essentially, you're taking ordinary citizens, you're putting them through this training and this propaganda, and they're not only serving faithfully within the Empire, but they're also returning to their families, or at least while not serving, becoming citizens of the galaxy. If it's just clones, I mean, you don't really need to use propaganda on them to have them serve, but then on the other hand, they're not really citizens of the Empire in the same way that conscripts or recruits or volunteers are. So hopefully that makes sense. The Empire probably chose to turn to its populations because the military could thus help further entrench Imperial ideals. So that's that sort of direct propaganda that I mentioned earlier, but there's also other secondary effects. For example, and not to be callous, think about how real-world militaries use the fact that it's citizens serving within the military to drum up support for the troops, and thus support for the military itself. It's like, say you've got a son or a sister or a family member or a close friend serving in the Imperial military. That alone is probably going to change 
change your relationship with the empire, especially when accompanied by propaganda. And it also may help to pacify certain systems. Like if I were Palpatine, for example, and I knew far off that one specific planet or star system was going to be difficult to manage, it makes sense to get a bunch of the young people recruited into the empire, put them through propaganda, and kind of have them as a local force, knowing not only that them serving helps draw support, but also that if anyone wants to rebel, they will be rebelling against real living people, perhaps from their communities, not just faceless clones. Another distinct factor, and one I think we may see explored in the Bad Batch, is one you guys pointed out in my comments for the prior video, the fact that with Kamino right now producing all of the clones in the galaxy, that's a single weakness in the Imperial military structure. One weak point that can be taken down and seriously cripple military operations. It's not good for the Empire to have one single non-Imperial faction or corporation or even being to be that important. If they move away from clone production, that means the Empire can diversify its sources of new soldiers. They can have recruitment and academies on every planet if they want to. They're not beholden to the whims of the Kaminoans, who do, by the way, in a system where they're producing a clone army, have a lot of power. And just generally, the Empire gets a more secure control on its own future, which I think is definitely something that Palpatine would have wanted. Again, you may be losing out in some areas, like I think overall soldier effectiveness definitely drops, but the Empire is also securing itself a more reliable future where it controls the income of new soldiers. Star Wars Legends saw the Empire also grappling with this issue. The Kaminoans became unreliable and also tried to rebel. So the Empire tried to diversify its sources of cloning, looking at new cloning methods like Sparty cloning, but also its cloning samples. So even while Jango Fett clones were still coming in, the Empire was taking their best soldiers and pilots and entering them into the cloning database and taking their DNA, and at least in some respect, beginning to clone based on new templates. Although generally these clones were nowhere near as effective as the Kaminoan clones. Not because they were a worse template, template, but just because Kaminoan cloning methods were far superior to any other in the galaxy. But guys, that's all I have for today. Until next time, let me know what you thought of this video. Leave your comments down below. I will definitely read them. Is there anything regarding the Bad Batch or Star Wars lore in general you'd like me to cover? Let me know. Be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.